Hello and welcome to this new video. So this is going to be a little bit different and this has been a long time coming but now I finally get into it and we're going to start to talk a little bit more about the horse as well. So the horse's anatomy, biomechanics and function. And today we're going to do just a very general overview of the horse's spine and the mobility of the horse's spine. And I've got my horse Diva here. Uh, she's going to be modeling today. She actually had a mild colic, but uh, I hope she will be fine. She's definitely looking better. She's just a little bit bored at the moment. Okay, but first, before we get into the spine, as riders, as trainers or whatever, we are kind of the horse's personal trainer and it's so important to understand about the anatomy and the function of the horse because we are riding them or training them otherwise might not be riding but driving or some other kind of working from the ground and we are asking them to do a lot of things so we need to be we need to know enough and we need to educate ourselves so we know that what we're asking from them is actually good for them and not and not bad for them because if we ask them to do things that are not actually good for them or ask them to move for example to move in a way that is not actually good for them that can definitely cause a lot of trouble and a lot of harm and that can cause pain and also a lot of health issues for the horse so i'll just give you a quick example a lot of riders think that if you just get the horse's head down and you get the neck round then the horse is working correctly but that might not be the case it might be because we definitely want the neck round but we also want to be thinking about the whole horse so it's definitely not the neck and if the neck is round and the head is down it doesn't still mean that the horse is working correctly and carrying themselves correctly and especially if you force the horse's head down that can have a very very negative effect on the horse and especially on the horse's cervical spine but we're going to go a little bit more into this and a little bit deeper into this later so today <laughs> she's so bored <laughs> so i'll just try and get into today's topic and we're going to do a very general overview of the horse's spine so come here now come here come here <laughs> come on Good. okay so the horse has seven cervical vertebrae so and the horse's cervical spine it's not actually up here but it goes down here then it kind of dives in between the scapulas and it turns or transfers into thoracic spine and there are 18 thoracic vertebrae and there are also 18 ribs attached to those vertebrae and the thoracic spine is also the area on which we sit on when we're riding the horse so here now I can locate the last rib so just about here is the last thoracic vertebra and then there is the lumbar spine and there is six lumbar vertebra well actually approximately six some horses for example some Arabs have five and then there is the lumbar sacral junction which connects the lumbar spine and the sacrum and it's a hinge joint and there's actually quite a lot of movement in this joint and that enables the horse to bring the hind legs under and turn the pelvis under for example when we're collecting the horse so then there are five 
sacral vertebrae that are fused together so it's actually just one bone and then we have again approximately 18 caudal or tail vertebrae but there's some variation also and now if we think about the mobility of the horse's spine the horse's spine especially the back is actually quite stiff there's not a lot of movement in there and the most mobile part of the horse's spine is the horse's neck and it's actually very important for the horse's spine to not be as mobile as for example uh, cats or dogs spine because well if it was that mobile we couldn't actually ride them and because they are such big animals and there's a lot of weight so inside the thoracic cavity all those intestines and everything it's so heavy so it needs to be quite stiff to support all that so the movement directions of the horse's spine are flexion and extension. So flexion means rounding. So I'll see if I can show you. So now the horse is, Diva is rounding her spine and rounding her back. So bringing the back up. And that's actually what we want when <laughs> she's used to getting a carrot. And that's what we want when we're riding the horse. So we want the horse to round the back. And then there's extension. So the horse brings the back down. This is what we don't want to happen when we are riding the horse. And then there's rotation. So, you know, rotation. I'll show you later. And then there's lateral flexion. So bending sideways. And the most mobility in flexion extension direction is in between the skull and the first cervical vertebra, then of course the whole neck, and then also the lumbosacral junction that we talked about already. Most rotation in the horse's spine happens between uh, the first and second cervical vertebrae so atlas and axis so maybe maybe it's easier if I show you than to show on her so rotation is that the horse is or, or a person is rotating the head like that and then if we talk about lateral flexion so uh, bending sideways. Most mobility is in the horse's neck, so the cervical vertebra, vertebrae, and then also actually in the thoracic spine, just behind the withers. But now if we think about riding, that's exactly where the saddle and the rider sit. So that's going to limit that mobility in a big way. And if we think about bending, so when we're riding the horse, you're on a dressage lesson and then you're riding some circles. So the trainer wants you to bend the horse according to that curve, right? But that's actually not possible. So the horse cannot bend from its, from its whole body like that. So that's actually an illusion. I know it's, it really looks like that when you look at dressage competitions, for example, but it's not actually true. Just like I said, and we talked about that uh, lateral bending. There's not a lot of lateral bending in the horse's spine, but excluding the neck, of course. So we're going to talk a lot more. We're going to talk a lot more about that. And I'm going to do a separate video about bending and the biomechanics of bending. So because it's e <laughs> Hey, <laughs> she's going now. We're almost done <laughs> because it's important to actually understand what's happening so then we can better also understand 
why and how we need to ask things from the horse. But uh, later we're going to go a lot deeper into all of these subjects and we're going to talk more about the neck separately and also about the back and about all the other body parts also and also what we're looking for when we're riding the horse. So I'll see you later. Bye! You bet.